in most cases, I'm the only one who looks like me doing what I'm doing, which means I actually represent my communities. And a lot of underrepresented scientists who are in unique con um, positions, that's exactly what happens. They're the onlys. There's a lot of onlys. My name is Cherie Butts, and I'm in the program leadership group in the research and development organization at Biogen in Cambridge, Massachusetts. My current title is associate director, which is a very generic term. What my role is, program manager for the, all of the research projects, so everything before it transitions into development into the clinic. What that entails is bringing multidisciplinary teams together making sure we are answering the right questions, uh, making sure we're getting there in a timely manner, making sure we're making decisions on whether or not we should move forward, making sure we're mitigating risk, and coming to hopefully what is a development candidate and presenting that to the development organization. So a typical day in industry probably many people would tell you the same thing. It's a series of meetings. And for me, because I'm a program manager and I have to make sure that we're getting to a decision, I will have a series of meetings, which I call a pre-meeting, to figure out who's going to say what and what information needs to be communicated during the meeting. Then we have the actual meeting in which the information is communicated. And then we come up with action items. And then there's post-meeting, which is making sure that all of the people who are supposed to complete those action items know when they're supposed to complete them. I think that my role and my experiences are very unique from other underrepresented scientists. And because it's so unique, I think that it's very important to take advantage of that and to use it in a way that is unique. And so my belief is that my Giving back to my community actually is in that niche role. It's more of, okay, you've done all these things that very few people who look like you are doing. What does that mean? So it means two things. It means in most cases, I'm the only one who looks like me doing what I'm doing, which means I actually represent my community. So that's one thing that I think is very important. And a lot of underrepresented scientists who are in unique con um, positions that's exactly what happens. They're the onlys. There's a lot of onlys. And we have to be very aware of what that means. We walk into a room and no one has ever seen anybody who looks like us. And whatever we do is going to be supposedly representative of, of our entire community. So we have to think very carefully about our actions in front of others. We also have to consider, what am I going to do with my own community? How do I give back directly as opposed to indirectly? And that is... That's actually a very difficult concept because there's so much that one can do to give back and you usually get many people asking for all of those things. And I think that something that's very key is you can't drain one person. You can't have 20 different commitments going to one person because otherwise you'll exhaust them. The other point that's very important is that I think that my becoming successful is actually going to be important for my community. That if I get to the top, that that will mean just as much as me working in the grassroots and down, you know, in the, in the weeds with everybody. I actually think that what I do should be connected to what other people who look like me, or maybe even people who don't look like me do, in terms of fostering the pipeline in terms of increasing the pool of individuals who want to become scientists. Uh, I think that there's, there's a couple different things. A, I'm not at the bench all the time as I used to be. And I think it's very important that that be okay. And I think that unfortunately we still have that pull that being a bench scientist is the only kind of scientist that matters. But the truth is there's a lot of different science that's just as important. Even at Biogen, we have scientists in our finance department. We have scientists in our corporate strategy department. And you know what? They're all critical. We have scientists in the White House, and they're driving what the science policy is. All of that is very critical, and I believe that my role being a non 
bench scientist most of the time is just as critical in order to foster that it's okay not to be at the bench because you're still just as successful and you're still a stellar scientist because you contribute in a different way. So I think that's important. I also have colleagues who are at the bench and who are bridging between more administrative roles and um, the and working at the bench and I think that's just as critical and I think that what happens is all of us lined up together basically makes a spectrum and it's like this is what a scientist is and you pick any of them and they're all they're all okay they're all great they're all fantastic and you succeed in any of those and you're still a successful scientist so I think that my role is a niche, but I'm standing next to someone else who does a niche, standing some to, next to somebody else who does a niche, and all of us together means that someone who looks like us from our community can look and say, oh, look at all the different things I could be, and I'm still a scientist. I had to offer advice to the next generation. It would be to have situational awareness, which means you would understand what's going on around you. Make a note of the dynamics, take that into account, and then move forward accordingly. Another piece of advice that I would like to offer the next generation of scientists would be to know your strengths. Use those to your advantage. Emphasize them as best as possible because those are what make you unique.